Welcome back to the channel, my name is Abon, we are back with Football Manager 2019 and Eastern Resurgence these days with the BFC Dynamo and welcome to Season 2. Uh, we are starting not over again but it's a brand new season, of course last season we finished in 4th place which is a repeat finish from their 2018 finish. Hoping to go a bit better this season, we're going to try and go for a promotion. We've told the players that we can finish near the top of the table this season so a good finish again, top four, would be brilliant. We were just behind the top three last season. We drew way too many games. So so hopefully we'll win a few more games than we did last season and then we will be in the equation for promotion, hopefully. So uh, today, I, I know I said last time I was going to do a transfer special, but I've played all the friendlies and we are at the first game. It's a home game against Raf now to start off. Before that, though, I'll go through all the transfer stuff. And then we'll briefly go through the results in the friendlies. So we'll start off with the players that were released at the end of their contracts. Now, a lot of these guys played very few games for us last season. Some of them weren't interested in signing. Others got picked up by other clubs. So there's been a lot of people leave the club. So we'll go through these one by one. Chepney retired at the end of the season. So uh, he is not playing for anybody now. Ronnie Garbachevsky has moved to Halle, which is a team that got relegated from the third tier, from the Dubai Bundesliga. And they're now in the same division as us. So they are probably one of the favourites to go up as they were relegated from the tier above. So he's gone to them. Chibutu, the captain, of course, he missed a lot of last season with a long-term injury. He's moved... Uh, within Berlin, but gone to Berlin at AK. So a bit of a interesting one there, moving to a local rival. Nicholas Brandt plays for Osnabrück in the third division. Uh, we tried to tie him down to a contract, but his wage demands were too high. He's earning £4,000 there, which, um, yeah, we can't afford that, I think. With us, he wanted about 25 k and even that was, that was way, way more than our highest earner earns. So... It wasn't really realistic to get him in, which is a shame because he was a brilliant like defensive midfielder. He was a real tank in that midfield. Marcel Rausch is still a free agent, but we can't pick him back up. Um, we are really lacking on the right side of midfield at the moment. Really lacking. Chris Rea plays for uh, First and Valder in the same division as us. Bjorn Lambach has followed Rea to First and Valder. And Eve Brickman is a free agent, but he's not very good for us. He played, I don't think he played a single match, did he? He played one match. So those guys have all gone, all their contracts expired. And then three players were sold on Bosman. So between January and June, these guys were picked up on uh, pre-contract. So Milan Matula has returned to the Czech Republic to play for, uh, I don't know how you say it, is it Genomo? I've got no idea. Patrick Wesley did not play a single match for us. He was uh, bought in the January and then the June. He was on a non-contract. Uh, Watton says picked him up. He's Austrian. I'm guessing Watton is in Austria. And Patrick Brendel, a centre-back that we really weren't planning on using, has gone to Bautzen, who I think are in the same division as us. So that's all the outs. Um, it has left our team very short in options in some places, but uh, I think we've, we've got some good players in. We've still got a lot of work to do, but there is still over a month left of the window. So there'll still be plenty of transfers. We are still trying to reload Majetjak, but um, he's not interested. We've tried... This happened last season. We tried about three times and he was, wasn't interested. But I think eventually after a while, he got fed up. So uh, we'll try that again. But five players have joined the club. We have also uh, reloaned a player. Pascal Schederman is still at the club. Uh, we've extended his loan from Magdeburg, so he's going to give us uh, another option, at least, at right back. So let's go through the five players that we have. So we'll start off with Nald McConnon, who uh, we got from on a free transfer from Leipzig, from our senior affiliate. His contract was up. I was going to just get him on loan, but his contract was up. And he's only earning £550 a week. And for a player of his standards, I think it's worth paying him some money. A lot of guys are on non-contracts, but we've had to sort of sort them out like a lot of the guys that we're going to get on non-contracts we've re-signed them but we've put them on part-time contracts just because i don't want to lose them otherwise we would have had even more work to do in this transfer window we would have, we would have had to make like 10 transfers 15 transfers so players that weren't earning money are now but it's only like 200 pounds a week which is going to put a hole in our budget but i think it's worth it because at least it keeps them at the club so McConnell is joined from Leipzig. He is born in Berlin, so we are trying to go for that quota of signing players from East Germany. He does have a joint nationality, though. He is uh, part Ethiopian as well, which is an interesting one. But I think he's a suitable replacement for Niklas Brandt as that sort of defensive midfielder, ball-winning midfielder. He can play as a Carrillero, but I don't think that really works in what we're trying to do. But a ball-winning midfielder in midfield, a suitable replacement for Nicolas Brandt, and he looks pretty good. We've got four free transfers and one loan. Um, free is Philip Bloom, coming from uh, Halberstadt. He spent three years there. 
and uh, he's going to jump in at centre back uh, with like two or three centre backs leaving over the past sort of few months. Uh, we needed at least two in, so Bloom has come in. He's German. Is he from East Germany? Uh, he's from Magdeburg, so I think that might be East Germany. I'm not quite sure. Again, he looks pretty solid. He's got three-star ability, and he's got a little bit of potential as well. He's a decent player for that. I think he can be a, a you know a good option, maybe starting for us. He's a first-team player, so I think he will be. We will be a key defender, I think. And I think alongside him will be Leander Seaman, who has joined from Berlin AK, so jumping across Berlin. Um, he's not particularly good at marking, but we can work on that. Uh, but his heading's decent, his tackling's all right. Mentally, he's got some decent attributes in there as well. He's got a bit of pace as well, so hopefully he can keep up with some of the defense, for some of the attacking players from, from the opposition. And I think we've got two solid defenders, and I think we've got our starting two, but we do still have Malambana at the club. And we have some youngsters in Igor Greco as well, the 16-year-old. So I think we're okay. Dragan Urkic has signed from Brieslang. And he is a winger, a much-needed winger, because we had literally nobody for the right-hand side because we sold them all. They all left on their contracts. Weren't interesting in renewing. So uh, Urkic has come in. He's more suited to the left-hand side. But if we are in really need of a player for the right-hand side, he can move over. Uh, his crossing is not bad at 12, technique's okay, decent leadership as well, I think that's something we're kind of lacking since we've lost, Brandt is like a real leader in the team, so hopefully he can fill a void uh, there, uh, physically he's got pace, he's agile, so hopefully he can cause some trouble on those flanks as well, Urkic looking like a decent signing. And lastly, we did get a player for the right flank. Uh, Paul Mild is on loan from Chemnitz, it's probably Milder actually looking at it, he's on loan from Chemnitz, He's not the best technically, but he's determined. Again, he's got a little bit of pace. 11's not too bad. It could be better, but 11's okay. As long as they're green at this stage, I'm not really bothered. In this division, I think. As long as they're green, that's good. Work rate, flair, teamwork. Like I said, technique and dribbling. I think he's a decent option. I mean, we're going to have more than that. We need more than one right winger. So um, there will still be plenty of action in the transfer window. But for now, that's all we've got. But um, yeah, we're going to need some more players. Mayet Jack, I'm going to try and try and try and get him in. Um, Salah, uh, we tried to get him on loan again, but his contract was expiring and uh, he signed a non-contract. So uh, he's not interested in signing because he's just signed a contract. So that's out of the question. So uh, the first game of the season. Uh, so look at the league table. I think our media prediction was sixth. It is. It was seventh last season. So that's one better. That's okay. Um, up from the lower tiers, you've got Luckenwalder who are up from the fourth tier, uh, fifth tier rather. And you've got Tennis Borussia Berlin. They're playing the wrong sport. So if they're going to start trying to hit the ball with rackets, then I think that should be a pretty easy affair because they're obviously in the wrong game. This is not tennis manager. So I played a few games pre-season. I saw you I played them. I left these to the assistant manager just because I don't really need to play them. And he did pretty well. Um, had an inter squad friendly first of all, uh, just a couple of days after they came back from their holidays, back into training, and uh, Brasnich and Seaman scored the goals there. Uh, against Stuttgart, it was a 3-1 defeat, that's expected, they're a good team, Mario Gomez scoring, Gonzalo Castro, uh, Zemi got a goal for us. Uh, a 3-3 draw against Nîmes, that's a pretty good result, although two of their goals did come as own goals from us as well, and then Ravel Morrison scoring, and also McConnell getting a sending off in that match. We beat uh, young PSV 2-1, two, two early goals there for Brasnich against essentially PSV's youngsters. And then a 2-0 win against Stad Malam Con, and it was Azemi and Brasnich scoring there. So I think pre-season's gone pretty well. Uh, let's jump into the Raffinale match then. I'll show you our staff screen as well because I love how this looks. Um, the only change we made this season was we got in a new head of youth development because our previous one retired. And uh, yeah, he is in. But our coaching setup's looking really, really good. And our, our scouting and our medical team, like we've got, we've got amongst the best in the league for everything. It's just defense and man management are the only things that we are not the best in. Okay, so for this match, um, this is just a quick pick. So I'm not sure if this is what we want to do or not. We're missing a real playmaker in the squad because we no longer have Mayet Jack. So we could put Schultz in there. Taziki is an option as well. Oscar and Beadle, I don't really want to use them. So I think we'll stick with these two. We'll put Urkic on the right-hand side for now, but uh, we will have um, Milder on the bench if we do need that option. Twardzik will pick up where he left off last season, hopefully, as well as Emi and Brasnitz. And the back four, Silver and Freeze keep their places at four back. 
And we've got the new partnership of Bloom and Seaman in centre-back. Hendel uh, stays in goal. The new captain for the club as well, with uh, Brandt leaving. So Hendel is the new captain. Nico Weisner actually didn't play at all for us last season, but he could be a very valuable option as a backup goalkeeper. And if um, Hendel has a bad string of games, I've got no problem bringing Weisner in because he looks like a very solid keeper. So it's rough now with a 4-1-4-1. Um, do these mean they're new transfers? I don't know what these mean. Alezi. I think that means they're new transfers, new signings and debuts. Um, yeah, because we've got ours as well. So these are all debutants. They've got four in their team. Last season against Rafinha, it was a draw at home and then we beat them 2-1 away from home. So um, did well against them last season. First match of the season here. So I really hope that it's not going to be the same result that we had against Nordhausen at the start of last season, which was a 5-0 home defeat. Let's see how this goes. In fact, speaking of Nordhausen, that fixture, that same fixture, is the last fixture of this season. So <laughs> that's a bit of interesting news, is that the game we played first last season is our last game this season. But we are underway. Uh, let's see what happens. Coming up to half an hour, we've yet to have a shot at goal. In fact, they've only had two, so not been a, a great match so far. Come on, guys. We're going to have a highlightless first half, aren't we? Of course we are. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, it's a great, a, a great first match and a great first half. We haven't seen anything. We've had a couple of shots on target, though, so that's something. But we haven't actually seen any football yet. And it's half time. We've got, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm far from pleased. Brasnitz is also on a yellow card as well. In terms of other, other strikers, we're going to need a backup striker. The only other one we have is Teela. Um, the, what is he, 16, 17? Don't really want to have to ring him on. But um, we could put Twardtick up front. We could put Bristet up front. That's definitely options there. Go for a demand more because I would like to see some highlights in this game, ideally. There's <laughs> 20 minutes left. Come on, let's have a highlight. I'm going to go positive play. 15 minutes left, and we still have not had a highlight in this game. Right, let's make a change. Twardzik is going to move... Is he going to go up front? He's going to go up front. He's going to replace Brasnic. We'll get Broistet on. Swap these two around. And it's the last 10 minutes, and this game has had absolutely nothing to it. No, 85 minutes, and it's 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 nil-nil. There's been no highlights. This is embarrassing. We'll start to whistle. I've done a transfer special now. No highlights. Absolutely, there's one right at the end of the match. You've got to be kidding me. Please go in. Oh, it is in! McConnell on his debut gets the goal. 93rd minute, the first highlight of the match, and we score. If, I tell you what, if you've ever seen Smash and Grab, that is it. McConnell up for the header on his debut. The German Ethiopian gets the goal. Bloody hell. Okay. <laughs> what is What a game. Well... I say what again, what a bad game. With 1-1-0, one, one, with the one and only highlight. And now I'm waiting for full time. There it is. And with 1-1-0, one, one, we're off the winning start. But what a bizarre game. Looking at the match stats, apart from that goal, there was not a single chance or half chance in that match. Well, I guess the only thing we could take from that is that defending is good. There's a good start for, to our um, defensive partnership of uh, Seaman and Bloom. Conan gets the goal as well. Going forward, just we didn't have a we didn't have Bietchak. That's it. We, we need a proper playmaker. That is one position that we definitely need to to get. That's like a priority. Uh, but it's a winning start, so that's good. So let's have a look at our upcoming fixtures now. Victoria, they're the rivals. Uh, but we played those last season. We could play one of the um, promoted sides. You've got Luke and Valde coming up. Uh, and then there's Halle as well, who are relegated from the third tier. So we could do one of those. The unbeaten run is still alive from last season. It's now at 29 games. So can we keep it going? In fact, looking at... Wow. So we are actually close to equaling the record. Most matches without losing is 30. So we are one away from equaling Leipzig's record from 2012 to 2013. We can actually break a record next off screen. That makes me want to play the next match straight away. Just to, like the next two matches. Do we want to do that? That's that's a pretty big deal. So can we break the record? We'll try it. We're going to do that. I didn't realise we were so close to actually that record. I thought it was going to be like 50 matches like Arsenal, like 49 matches. We're one away from equaling it. So next time, we're going to take on both Babelsberg and Halberstadt. And if we can not lose in those two matches, we'll have broken a new record for the division of unbeaten matches. 
That would be insane. Look, we're going to do it. We're absolutely going to do it. Next time, Bubblesburg and Harvestart, we are going to break a record. But that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, do drop a like down below, leave comments. And if you want to see videos as on when they turn up on YouTube, do hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to receive updates if I upload or go live. And follow me on social media so you don't miss any of my content. Next episode, we are going to break a record. That's ridiculous to say. I did not realize we were so close to that. So next time, we're going to go for 31 unbeaten. A brand new record for the division. Thank you for watching, guys. And I will see you soon. Goodbye.